Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another figure review, and this time it is a very, very awesome one, a very enormous one as well. This figure is freaking huge. This figure is a box. <laughs> I have him off screen at the moment. It is obviously Charizard, and this is from the D-Arts line, if you can see it right here, it says D-Arts. Um, different figure brand than the last one I showed you, but this one is pretty freaking awesome. Um, first, I'm going to start with the box, because it alone is so big, it's taking up the entire screen, and I need to swap out for other stuff later. So, um, this is the front of the box. You can see we have foil on the front of this, and uh, through here is where we would see Charizard. You can kind of see the mold in there, where he was. You can also read in there. Um, it says uh, Lizardon, Lizardon in a circle. That's his um, Japanese name, and it's just spiraling around. I think it just says, yeah, Lizardon all over the place on this thing anyway. Once again, another Japanese box. We're never going to have one that we can actually read. <laughs> Alright, so, um, I already kind of showed you a bit of the top. It's kind of the same. Showing this uh, silhouette Charizard, you'd be able to see through there. Another logo of him, another D-Arts. Just uh, spilling over the side. But we do have this really awesome foil Charizard image right there. Here's the back. Where they love to show different types of poses you can get with this thing. And, um... Man, some of these are, I mean, this figure is really easy to pose, but then there's the problem of trying to actually get it to fly in the air like this. I'll show you that issue later, but anyway, um, just comes with a couple extra stuff. The fire's uh, particularly awesome. And it's the other side of the box. Got another one of those Lizardons. And the bottom, which held upside down. Um, yeah, just lizard on D arts, which you know wasn't on every other side of the box, so gotta print it again. All right, and there's the giant, freaking, enormous, massive box. And just for a size comparison, that is how big it is. This thing is huge. All right, so inside that ginormous box is the accessories. <laughs> I'm gonna show you these first because I'm gonna forget if I don't do this first. So first is that amazing fireball that he comes with, completely translucent with orange and red. This thing is so awesome looking. Like sometimes I pose it with other figures, um, just because it makes it look, uh, it's just really cool addition to like anything that uh, will spit fire. Now, aside from that, he comes with this, I'm going to pull that off for a second, this clear Pokeball stand, which is really awesome too. I really like this. Um, if any issue I have with it, it's that you see this grid in it, but that's just for support, and you really do need the extra support considering how massive he is. And you really want the support if you're going to attempt to pose him in the air, which, yeah, that, that'll be tough. So, to do that, you have uh, one of these, which is similar to what um, the Figma's stands were like. Um, very similar, in fact. What you're going to want to do, same deals, just, you know, you just stick it in one of these parts kind of got an octagon grid so it'll lock it in place once you put it in. And then these move really easily, but they'll stay. Now you have an option for what you want to put in here. Usually I'll just put the fire. It's got a little hole in the bottom like you saw before. It'll peg right in there and it sticks. You can put it wherever you want coming out of his mouth. Or swap it for this clamp thing, which will move. It'll, as you can kind of see, it's it'll kind of grasp onto him and you stick that on here as well. And basically, the flying poses are all a very horrifying balancing act. <laughs> as far as I can tell, I've um, not really seen anyone pull off a really stable one. Usually, I'll try something like that so that it's not pivoting on that joint because there's just so much weight in Charizard that um, this poor stand just cannot hold him up. So, for now, I'm just going to put this back on. And let's actually get the uh, center of attention back out here. There's this massive guy right here. All right, so this Charizard is amazing. The main reason I got this one here, let's just fix that for the moment. The reason I got this guy was because I was um, opening up some Pokemon card packs and I got, um, oh geez, what was it? It was like a full art um, Deoxys EX card, which at the time was like, 60 bucks, so that was awesome, and I was like, you know, I don't really want it over $60, but I wanted this, so I was like, you know, in a form of trading my card to get this guy, 
I'm going to put it on eBay. I had some help from um, somebody else to put it on eBay, and uh, we got a decent amount out of it. It was like uh, 55 but then, you know, you put shipping into it. But either way, it, um, in the end, I took that, put it towards Charizard, and I ended up just with shipping and the remainder. only paid like 20 bucks for him. So, yes! That was awesome. Um, normally, he costs... Uh, I kind of want to say around 70 bucks to get. Um, the price changes a lot currently and you know how figures the price will just change based on how many people want it and um, it's kind of tough to get the Charizard now because the D-Arts line made um, a Venusaur Blastoise as well as a Mewtwo and the Mewtwo even had a re-release so they're kind of difficult to get a hold of them especially when the most popular one was Charizard and everyone kind of wants to grab that Charizard and the more people who grab the Charizard the more expensive it gets so kind of a pain in the butt that everyone else wants these things so anyway um, let's start taking a look at this guy he is freakishly long um, I mean like once again that's my hand back there it's not very far back he's just he's just huge like wingspan and everything he's taking up like the whole screen that's how big this guy is. Um, let's start again and go head down so you can see all the pivot joints. I already closed his mouth as you saw. His The top part of his head is on... I'm going to hold him still so you can see it. There is a joint in there. It's a little stiffer. You see you can hear it kind of cracking. It don't worry about it. It's not like messing up or anything. It's just a really stiff one to make sure that it holds him still. It's not as smooth as the others. So yeah, I mean, you do feel a little like, hey, I'm breaking him, but you're not. Um, oh, as you can see really close right there on that wing, now that I noticed it, there's a couple bits on him where um, I guess the mold wasn't like pristine enough because there's another bit like on his horns. You see it there where um, it looks kind of chipped but um, he came like that, so whatever. And he was brand new, so um, don't think that it was like a used one that was busted up or anything. Um, just be warned that they do come very faint nicks on them, so if you're like a museum quality nut who's gonna make sure that your figures are you know, in pristine condition all the time, then you better just uh, either have some touch-up stuff for these guys, which I don't know how you would even go about touching these up because they're so difficult to touch up. Considering how, yeah, before I get into the joints then, um, considering how difficult it would be to touch up because of the uh, paint job on these. I don't know if the camera's picking this up as well as you can actually see it, but he's completely airbrushed, like everywhere, obviously except for his tail, which is more of that awesome clear fire stuff. But um, he's totally airbrushed everywhere. His back, every shade is uh, changing to different oranges. You can see the, like the, almost the bone structure. It's almost, yeah, sculpted in, and then it's also painted in, into his wings. It's awesome. Uh, same deal on the other side of the wings, different blues. I think there's different yellows in there, but it's harder to see in his belly. But, um, yeah, basically, so that's why he'd be really tough to patch up if you wanted to, because um, he's, he's just so many different colors all over the place. Alright, so, back to those joints. Obviously you saw how I opened his mouth. That's about as far out as his jaw will go. Um, mainly for like breathing fire stuff. His tongue even has a joint. I don't know why, because it can go sideways. You can be like, Duh! do like that. Um, you can see it in there. It's on a little peg. And um, the reason is, I think, is when you open him up like this, the mouth is flat. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll go in here with my nail, pull it up a bit so that the tongue's not completely flat so it doesn't look kind of stupid and that way he'd be able to you know close his mouth as if it was stuck he wouldn't be able to close his mouth it would be like that so now you can't close his mouth sweet all right so that's the uh, many exciting things about the head <laughs> it's also nice he's got like the um, fangs sticking out as well um, the next joint down under the neck is this in-between one in his neck and um, that's about as much as you'll get out of it you don't really need any more um, I mean, like, he's going straight up to, like, all the way down. And remember, I can also turn this joint in his neck, too. So this isn't the full extent of what he can do with just his neck. He can pretty much look anywhere you want. So that's pretty cool. Same kind of joint is right here 
where the neck meets the shoulders. And uh, that also gives them a whole lot of posability. From here, just because we're facing them, I'm going to do the arms first and then we'll look at the wings. The arms are on these itty bitty shoulder joints, which um, it's about as much as that shoulder is going to do. I mean, there's not really much you can do with Charizard's arms anyway. Usually he's just doing like a, I mean, you just stop like something like that and then depending on whatever the rest of the body he's doing, um, they look fine. You can make him do some pretty silly stuff though and then that'll require um, very detailed movement with the arms. At the elbow, you got another joint. It's a very tiny version of the one that's in the neck. You can hear it <laughs> as Charizard's face is awkwardly close to the camera. Hello. It also clicks a little bit. And um, that one, I never really worried about. In fact, I didn't even really know it was like the same type of joint till just a while ago. But it, it's fine. I mean, I've never had an issue with that joint. Um, this here is just kind of like on a rotatable peg. It's his hand, and so you can go completely around, uh, wiggle it around in a, a bit, so he's got a bit of wrist movement too. Same deal with the other arm. Now we'll head onto the other side just to see the wings. It's kind of easier to see how they're put together from the back. Um, I'm gonna work out in because the innermost is the weirdest area. Um, so on the very edges of his wings, these are kind of put in like, there's like a peg in here and a peg down at the bottom, which can help the wing do this. So you can either cave them in, push them back out again. Um, the only awkward bit about those wings is this joint in here, you can see it, between that area I said was really weird. This bit right here, because if you really want him to open his wing, that's about as much as you're going to get, and his wing is, looks kind of like broken. Sometimes when I really want his wing up, I'll try and curve it, kind of like that, so it doesn't look so weird. But um, when he's sitting down, say like here, that doesn't really look like the wing's up. Like I kind of wanted it like way out here, you know, but um, there's only so much you can do. You can rotate them with that back piece and do something like that, and that'll really help it. Which um, takes me to that last piece in the middle, just so you can see that join a little bit better. It's like another one of those pivot pieces. Actually, before I get to that middle piece, these are actually the only joint I have a problem with on Charizard, because for some reason, I guess they can't like hold the weight of this um, the rest of this wing very well, and when you come very close to like here, there's a point where one of the two of mine will just like fall. Like I'll set it like that and it'll just come on, like hold up. Like there it goes. It like doesn't have the strength to hold it up. I think the other wing was a little weaker. That was the problem. Yeah, like I, it'll not stay in that really cool area, but whatever. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Now here's the back that's um, kind of a weird joint. Just to show it to you, I could pop his wing off, but I'd rather not because I get paranoid. You can kind of see in there that this odd shape is stuck into his back on a bit of uh, an angle and you can move his wing like seriously like all the way up there which let me show you what I just did all the way down to like that they, they can seriously like go all the way around just to give you an idea of what that joint is in there now the reason that's in there is so you can do stuff like what I was showing you before where you tip it either forward or backward but that's like as much as it'll get tipping forward and backward, but that's still a lot of movement out of that wing. Yeah, there it goes again. It's like, don't want to hold. <laughs> it kind of bugs me sometimes, but whatever. All right, moving down from the wings, we have the legs. Now, if he's standing, you'll probably never move these, but even if you are, he's got like a ton of joints just in his leg. I'm going to show you like this far one. So, yeah, you can hear that's um, it doesn't sound like it's the same joint as what was in the neck and the elbow, but I'm not sure exactly what that one is. I've never popped it out before. You can hear it though, and it sounds kind of so something. Something's up. It, it can't be one of these because it's not. Um, ro it's rotating. It's not clicking into place. But anyway, that's what um, that joint will do for you right there. There's also two little ones right here, which are 
like, super insignificant. Like, they don't do anything. Like, they should have just made this a flat leg. But, um, I guess they were attempting to do something. I guess all that really happens is that. I can't get this one to even move. This one in between his, um, knee and his heel. It, like, it does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. <laughs> but, um, it's there. It doesn't really matter. Um, once again, foot on the side, same deal. And now we have this, um, insane tail of his. Holy cow. This tail is just nuts. What? I think I've done this before. I, I was, uh, trying to count exactly how many joints are just in this tail. We've got, um, from the base, we've got one big one here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different joints just in his tail. I'm not even sure if I counted that right, because I remember at one point I got to 11. So, th it's just crazy how many joints they put in his tail. I mean, downside is, like, when you view him from, like, here, it looks <laughs> kind of bad, but um, this is how you normally see him. So you don't see those uh, uh, edges, like this. Um, the tail... Okay, it's got a ton of joints in it, and it can move pretty well, but sometimes it just... You'll get, like, one of these joints kind of stinks, and then you can't really move the whole thing. Like, uh, as you can see, this first joint, that's about as much as it'll do. It just goes up and down a bit. I'll keep it up just for now. Um, this second one moves a bit side to side. So you got an up and down, a side to side. And then after that, this one will also move side to side or up and down. So it's... They're not really joints. What they are is they're basically, like, these plastic... The same shape kind of crammed into the next one, so they're like little cones. Each one's like another cone stuck into another cone, stuck into another cone. And um, I know that because I know one of them, I think it's this one in particular, on mine, um, likes to bust out. And as you can see right there, um, it I can just never get this one to pose right, and because of that, the whole tail is now like kind of awkward because of that. Um, if I bend it down too much, the whole tail pops off. So, you just kind of have to deal with that. Hopefully, it's about as far as I've ever gotten it to go before. Actually, I think I just fixed it. If it weren't for the, um, you can see the yellow isn't straight on there. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's up with um, the joints in the tail, but they're kind of scary to move, but you can do a lot with it. Like, I'm going to try and move it as much from that straight point, say, like, all the way to the right about as much as you get out of it and that's quite a lot and that was just one direction I can do like right and up at the same time see there's my joint coming loose just a bit right there and there that's quite a bit just out of that tail so from head on you'd actually be able to position that tail wherever you want it and uh, like if you're doing that you probably turn the fire over too so quite a lot of movement out of that tail um, I'm really surprised that um, he was uh, done so well, considering how there's not really many really good Pokemon posable figures out there, other than obviously the ones I said from D Arts that they've made before. And um, yeah, there was another posable Charizard, but uh, it was uh, I don't remember the company. It came with like a Charmander, Charmeleon, and it really just looked kind of derpy. Didn't look very good. So I'm super glad that uh, this one was well worth the money. He looks so awesome. You can really pose this thing to do a whole bunch of stuff. And I I feel like I just recommend him over like a lot of my other figures. Unfortunately, I think he's my most expensive figure I've got. Um, the only reason, like I said, I got him was because of that um, card deal. Um, but I would highly recommend this Charizard to anybody, or if people who are trying to complete the uh, D Art set already know that uh, their joints are really nice. I mean, it's not on par with those Figma joints that we've got on uh, other figures, but they're really close. They're really close. They're just about as good. Um, there's some other figures I've got where the joints actually just drive me bonkers, but these are perfectly fine. I've never had a point where I'm like trying to get one pose and like a, one part just keeps falling off. Um, that leg, I mean, the tail. Not really, that just scarcely happens, but it's fine. 
So, um, we're going to take a couple pictures with Charizard real quick, and we're going to get to the final reviews of my ratings for the Charizard figure from D-Arts. Alright, now for some final thoughts on Charizard. I would say that this is a really solid figure for uh, what you pay for. And uh, it is worth noting at this point, uh, between the fact that I made the video and now the audio part of this video, that um, this Charizard's price has increased dramatically uh, to now about $180, which is a huge price jump. And honestly, as awesome as he is, I would say he's probably not worth that. Um, it's kind of upsetting to say that he's increased so much. I'm hoping that, like the Mewtwo D-Arts figure, um, it got really expensive and they decided to re-release it without the Mew figure. And um, if they do something similar with Charizard, I don't know what they would do to change it up. Um, maybe include like a small Charmander or Charmeleon to go with it. Um, non posable or anything, just something kind of cheap to make it a little, you know, stand apart from the others to increase its value. Um, or just, you know, make it a little more accessible to everybody because its price has cranked up. Um, if it's possible, then uh, that'd be great, because otherwise this figure has suddenly become really hard to get your hands on, and that's a shame, because it's really nice. Um, to rate it, I would say it's about a, uh, I would give it a 7 out of 10. It's really awesome, it's really big, it's that figure that I always kind of wanted as a kid, but the thing is, there's still just some weird things about it that kind of bother me, like uh, the wing not really holding up and the tail just being a little clunky. Um, and that and uh, not really being able to hold it up uh, flying, because it's really dangerous. Uh, you can give the flying a shot, like I said, it's basically a balancing act, kind of scary. Uh, I came in uh, once after having it set up and I found it on the floor, which is just never fun. So um, like I said, I wouldn't recommend uh, doing a flying pose, but the Charizard is still really awesome, really worth it, I would say, for the price I paid for it, but I don't know anymore. Hopefully it goes down if you're still interested in getting this Charizard, so uh, it's not a ridiculous price for you to get your hands on it. Alright, so uh, for that, I hope everyone the best of luck at getting a good price for this guy if you're interested in finding him, and I'll see you guys in the next figure review.